So you are at your computer, a Windows computer, or maybe you're, you are looking at pictures of Windows computers because you're a baller Mac user, or maybe because you don't have a computer, whatever, I won't judge you, but while you sit at the desktop, think to yourself, where did Windows begin? Do it. Think. I said do it. Do it! Think harder. I don't think... Okay, let's stop this nonsense. This is the history of MS-DOS. Okay, so, from the beginning. In 1978, Intel just released a shiny new 8086 processor, had shiny new features like the x86 architecture, self-repeating operations, signed in engineer, based on Intel... Oh, sorry, where was I? Oh yeah. IBM saw this processor and immediately fell in love with it. Some say IBM is still trying to marry the processor to this day. Anyway, IBM wanted to show the people, hey, look at this amazing new shiny processor which can process better than other processors. But there was a problem. There was no code to show off this shiny new processor. Microsoft did have their basic 86, but that ain't gonna cut it. That's so 1970s. We need something modern that wow the people. So Seattle Computer Products went to Tim Peterson and went, Can you pretty please make an OS for this 8086? And Tim went, Yeah, of course I will. Well, at least at least I think that's how it went. I don't know. I wasn't there. So he made QDOS, or 86DOS, depending on if you look at it funny. <laughs> Then Microsoft sniffed what was going on and they bought a license for 25,000 US dollars, which probably in 10 years that won't be enough to pay for petrol. But anyway, this is 1980 now, forget about all this economic stuff going on. IBM was busy building their newfounded love, the 8086, a home, the IBM PC. And IBM looked at 86 DOS and went, wow, that is so cool, I want that in my computer. But anyway, Tim Pedersen was commanded to make a version for IBM shiny new IBM PC using the shiny new 8088, the sequel. So he did. But then Microsoft, being Microsoft, bought all the rights to 86 DOS and went to IBM. No, no, no. If you want to use this OS, you have to pay us money. So IBM did, and it became PC DOS 1.0. Well, here's where things go, go wrong. Digital researcher noticed that 86 DOS, now PC DOS, got a little copy pasta with CPM. So they did what any good multi million dollar tech company does and threatened to sue IBM, especially since IBM claimed PC DOS was their own. But DR Legal Boy thought that the law wasn't too clear, so they couldn't get legal with IBM. When that happened, DR went to IBM and said that if IBM shipped DR's CPM86 with their IBM PC, their problem would vanish. Setting aside all this beef though, Microsoft later renamed 86 DOS to MS-DOS, and as you all know, the MS in MS-DOS stands for Monopolistic Sales. Anyway, Microsoft licensed a totally original MS-DOS to over 70 companies, but Anyway, you probably don't care about the very early days. I'm getting bored too, so let's push forward in time a bit. Anyway, fast forward to MS-DOS 2. It introduces support for FAT12, which unlike the FAT12 you get from regular McDonald's visits, it doesn't affect how much pressure you apply to the ground below when you stand. Instead, it adds support to bigger hard drives with a maximum capacity of 32 megabytes! Oh my gosh, I, I have never seen so much capacity in my life. How can anyone fill up the space? <sighs> anyway, let's stop talking about this fat business. There are there are some other new features in MSOS too, but they are so boring I'll probably make you fall asleep, which means you'll keep your phone on YouTube for longer, which means more watch time for me, but I'm not that mean. But now let's go to MS-DOS 3. It adds support to FAT16, which, guess what, also allows up to 32 megs. Oh my god, I am- 
it anyway, it brings support uh, to the hot new five and a quarter inch one point two meg floppy, and version three point three adds support to the one point four four three and a half inch floppy, which any Gen Z will look and f look at you and think, why are you holding a three D save icon? Anyway, well. About this time, while people were cherishing the lovely new support for 32 megabyte hard drives, Microsoft had something up its sleeve. Windows. The reason you, you would want to buy it? It had a GUI. So obviously this was a chance for Microsoft to start a civil war with its own product. And, and MS-DOS 4.0 came with the MS-DOS shell. It could manage your files. It could open DOS utilities that you can do with a couple characters on the command line. And not much else. But DOS had a thing up its sleeve. Something that would make previous versions of DOS look like a piece of litter on the streets. It could support hard drive partitions as large as... TWO GIGABYTES! <gasps> Gosh, I should stop getting so enthusiastic about hard drive sizes. Take that, Windows. Oh, oh wait, Windows ran under DOS. Sorry, MS-DOS. My bad, jeez. Don't have to be so pushy about it, okay? After this, later versions of DOS became a bit more boring. DOS 6 lost to Windows in the GUI Civil War. So by default, its MS-DOS shell got pulled out. Yeah, I know, it sucks, but at least it brought more disk compression stuff. Anyway, in 1995, Windows 95 came out, and people went insane. Probably even more than I did about the 2 gigabytes. And it came with its own MS-DOS built-in. No installing, no installing MS-DOS before you installed Windows. Of course... Since MS-DOS was part of Windows, you could still run DOS mode, which is basically the old way of doing stuff with the command line. But with uh, Windows Me in 1999, it blocked access to open MS-DOS mode. And in Windows XP in 2001, it abandoned MS-DOS, leaving it to the history books and YouTube videos. Anyway, if you liked the video, like the video, subscribe. I'm sure you watch so many videos, you know what I want you to do. So do it.